This is the fourth video for the Animal Chiropractic Class Ethics and Legal Considerations portion. We're talking about the licensing rules. And generally, as I look through the licensing rules, we have three basic schemes or paradigms or models for uh, what the rules say. For a number of states, there's simply no mention of animal chiropractic. It doesn't say whether it's included or not included within the practice of veterinary medicine, and it has no provisions for the training that might be required or the supervision that might be required for providing animal chiropractic care. There is also a fair number of states that have actually included animal chiropractic within the definition of practicing veterinary medicine. So clearly in those states, animal chiropractic can be provided only by a person licensed as a veterinarian or by someone acting under that veterinarian's supervision. Uh, just like working with assistants, uh, uh, veterinarians, licensed veterinarians and licensed chiropractors can delegate to assistants as long as they provide appropriate supervision. The question in these states is how much supervision is required, and it varies somewhat from state to state to the extent they've provided any definition at all. I would describe the rules as ambiguous and confusing, although there's some help, they're not particularly helpful in all cases. We also find in a few of those states, they've actually taken the step farther to define what qualifications are necessary to adjust animals, primarily for chiropractors and for laypersons, but also for veterinarians as well. So those are the first two schemes, either total silence about animal chiropractic or clearly saying animal chiropractic is within the definition of veterinary medicine. The third paradigm or, or model is uh, one that exists really only in Oklahoma. And in Oklahoma, chiropractors who are certified as AVCA doctors will be allowed to treat animals with animal chiropractic care without any supervision from a veterinarian. Every other state is going to require some level of supervision uh, or, or referral, at least, from a licensed veterinarian. Bottom line to keep in mind. If the scope of veterinary medicine includes chiropractic, then only a veterinarian or someone acting under the veterinarian supervision should practice animal chiropractic. Anyone else providing animal chiropractic is practicing veterinary medicine without a license and is subject to all the penalties we talked about in the last video. So let's start with the states that just say nothing. Generally, the Veterinary Practice Acts will have a very broad definition of practicing veterinary medicine that, so that it generally includes virtually any treatment of animals, but it may not specifically mention animal chiropractic or manipulation. There is this one case out of North Carolina, North Carolina versus Galligan, where a chiropractor argued that they were able to treat animals under their chiropractic license because the chiropractic act did not limit its its practice to the human spine in human patients now i think that was an extremely unusual result and i think it's an extremely weak argument i suspect the only reason it was successful in this case is that north carolina's chiropractic act somehow when they drafted it, they drafted it without referring to humans. And this was a criminal case, so the burden on the state was particularly high. I think in other situations like licensing sanctions, uh, even in North Carolina, this argument may not be successful. So I don't recommend, I, I want to tell you or mention that that argument is out there because that case is out there. But I also want to make sure you understand that I do not think that is a good case to follow. The other thing to remember is this is only a decision by a trial court. Decisions by trial courts are not precedents. Other courts in North Carolina will not be bound or required to follow this decision. There is no other court 
uh, underneath this court. This is just a trial court, so it's at the same level as all other trial courts in North Carolina. It's not a court of appeals. It's not the North Carolina Supreme Court. As far as I can tell, uh, this case was not appealed. Uh, so it's not going to be a binding decision on uh, uh, any other court in North Carolina or in any other state. Here we have a similar argument being made in Michigan. And the Michigan Chiropractic Act has some sections that do refer specifically to human spines, but other sections that just refer to spines in general. And the argument was made that chiropractors should be allowed to treat animals with just their chiropractic license. Ultimately, what the court held in this case, and this is a court of appeals decision, the court of, of appeals in Michigan held that the scope of chiropractic does not include the treatment of animals. Only veterinarians will be allowed to treat animals and only people acting under the supervision or delegation from those veterinarians. Arizona, there's a, an attorney general opinion. Again, the Veterinary Practice Act does not mention uh, animal chiropractic. And the question was whether a chiropractor solely by having a license to practice chiropractic could treat animals with animal chiropractic. And the decision of the attorney general in Arizona was that chiropractors cannot practice veterinary medicine. Now, attorney generals, by the way, their decisions or their opinions are not binding on any courts. So it would be possible that somebody could make an argument in the Arizona courts and get a different decision than what the attorney general has expressed in this opinion. But I think it's a pretty good indication, this attorney general opinion is a pretty good indication of what the uh, outcome is likely to be. This is also an attorney general opinion. This one's out of Pennsylvania. And this one doesn't deal specifically with chiropractic, but it deals with acupuncture. The Veterinary Practice Act in Pennsylvania did not discuss acupuncture as being a type of treatment for animals. As a result, an argument was made that acupuncture could be provided to animals by people who did not have a license to practice veterinary medicine. The Attorney General in Pennsylvania made it very clear, practice of acupuncture on animals clearly falls within the purview of the Veterinary Practice Act. State Board of Veterinary Medical Examiners may regulate the practice of acupuncture on animals by veterinarians or by others. So that's the first model where the, the statutes and the regulations simply say nothing about animal chiropractic care. But because the definition of practicing veterinary medicine is usually so broad, it's going to include alternative cares like chiropractic and acupuncture. And because the Chiropractic Act is almost always directed towards human patients, uh, it's unlikely that a chiropractor with just a chiropractic license can treat animals. It needs to be provided or supervised uh, by a veterinarian. So that brings us to the next model, which are the situations where animal chiropractic is specifically mentioned as practicing veterinary medicine. Uh, Alabama is an example. Uh, again, you can read this definition of the practice of veterinary medicine and you get a good feeling for how broadly these statutes usually define veterinary medicine. But it's also important to understand that the definition includes not just diagnosis, treatment, uh, so forth, dealing, the action of dealing with the animal. It also includes holding yourself out to the public. So what that means is that a chiropractor uh, cannot hold themselves out to the public as being an animal chiropractic or providing animal chiropractic care. We'll talk more about that when we talk about the advertising rules, but just as a general mention at this point, chiropractors need to understand that the definition of veterinary medicine includes not just treating animals, but also includes holding yourself out to the public or representing or using titles or abbreviations that indicate that you treat animals. 
the rule in Texas, now actually the statute in Texas does not mention animal chiropractic, but the rules adopted by the Board of Veterinary, Med Board of Veterinary Medical Examiners do spell out that chiropractic, animal chiropractic, is the practice of veterinary medicine and they do spell out that it's considered to be an alternate therapy and require a specific acknowledgement or consent to provide animal chiropractic care. Uh, Tennessee also, for example, does not have any mention of animal chiropractic in the statute, but in the regulations it clearly says the practice of veterinary medicine includes chiropractic therapy. Now, on this slide, I've listed a number of other states. Uh, these statutes uh, all indicate uh, that animal chiropractic or manipulation is included within the practice of veterinary medicine. Now, when they talk about manipulation, they may or may not be talking about chiropractic. But just to be safe, I want to make it clear that in these states, uh, the practice does include, or the practice of veterinary medicine does include animal chiropractic. In the next video, we'll talk about the kind of supervision that's appropriate or required in these situations.